Enhance your user experience by providing smart onboarding and getting user feedback. Let's discover Formbricks, a platform to create interactive surveys to guide your website users. Make their journey on your product better and get valuable reviews and feedback. To start using Formbricks, you have multiple options available. The first one is to use their cloud version. It's free and it's up to 100 responses per survey, which could be enough. Together, we'll see how to install the self-hosted version using LSEO, which allows us to have unlimited responses. Go to ls.io, hit login, click on deploy my first service, search for Formbricks, hit select, then select your cloud provider. I will stay on Hetzner. You can select your region, and your service plan. I will select an IRM64 to have more CPU at a lower cost, and I hit next. You can select your level of support, rename your project if you need to, and hit create service. I received the email notification to tell me that my instance is ready to use. I click here to get the password. Once I arrive on my service dashboard on LSTO, I click here to copy the password to my clipboard and go to my instance. Now I can do login with email, it's my LSEO email account address. And I pasted the password. Login with email. And here we are. We can follow the onboarding process. Begin one minute. I have to select my role to enhance the experience and the proposition that the application will make to me. I'll select engineer and hit next. Then I can select what is my main goal. I will select improve user retention and next. Then to help me select the widget, the product name, LSTO, and the color, here. Now I can hit Done. We arrive on the service page. There are many ready-to-use templates that we can start from. They are divided into categories based on what we want to do. Or we can also start from scratch. And globally, the general UI looks pretty nice. We'll start with a template and select onboarding segmentation. So this is the interface we get to create our different surveys. On the left, you have all your questions and logic. And on the right, you have a preview of what it will look like on your product. Let's have a quick look before creating our own from scratch. On the left, you have the different question. So here it's a select question. You can select only one value. You have the question, the description here, and different options. You can easily add or remove options. You can also add another one, which looks like it's treated differently because the border is not the same. You can convert it to multi-select if you want people to be able to select multiple ones. But let's get it back to normal. We can randomize all the options. It's nice to have if ever you need it. And you can define if it's required or not. And if it's not, I guess you can skip it if you don't select anything. Oh, by the way, the other one means you can write anything inside directly. Then the most interesting part is the advanced settings, you can define some logic. So based on what the user will select, you will react and jump to another question. But we will see it more in depth in our creation of one from scratch. And then we can go on the bottom and add another question just to show you that we have multiple type of questions ready to use. Okay, let's go back and start creating our own. Delete and start from scratch. By default, we have a default input, but we don't want this, so we can delete it and add our first question. Let's start with a single select. Hello, what do you want to do on LSTO? And then you can add a description or also get rid of it, but let's add one. We will guide you to get the best experience. You have example options. Let's get ours. Deploy a manage open source software, enable CI CD on your project, or another one, just browsing. So if the user select this one, we will just go to the end and leave it alone. So before adding the logic to connect it to the right next step, let's create the other questions. This one will be for deploy a manage open source software. We will add a free text to add the user what he wants to do. So do you need help to find the best tool for your needs? Tell us what you're looking for and we will send you a list of suggestions and write down your project and business needs. So we have that nice tab that can help the user and we will get its answer to get back to it. Then we will create a second one, which will be for enable CI CD on your projects. So add question. This one will be a call to action. 
question will be, do you need help? And the description will be, our team can help you set up your CICD pipeline. Then we can add a link to external URL, for example, to lead them to our Calendly. So let's add the URL to my Calendly. We can change the label of the button. So schedule a session. And what is nice is that you don't have to specify it. By default, it will be back. If you don't want to override it, you have the default value. And then because we don't want to block our user, we can remove required here and they will be able to skip. Now let's connect the different answers. So we go to the first one, show advanced settings. We'll add logic, select condition. So if it is equal to, and then automatically it will propose you the different options. So deploy a managed open source software. We will jump to the first one. Do you need help? Then add another logic. If it is equal to enable CICD on your project, we will jump to do you need help, but with the call to action. And then if it's the last one, just browsing, we will jump to the end of the survey because we don't want to block our user anymore. Let's try it on the right. If we select deploy a managed open source software, we arrive on that question. And if we select enable CICD on your project, we arrive on the call to action. Of course, it's a simple example, but you have other kind of questions such as adding a grade or also a multi-select instead of just one single select, but you can switch from one to another easily with the convert. And you also have a rating and a consent. So do you agree to help you make it GPDR compliant? Okay, let's get rid of it. Go back to here, we can open the settings. And what we will want to do is to embed it in a web application. Because it is a new server, I didn't connect any website yet, so we can follow their setup guide. There are different ways to add form breaks to our app, either by installing an NPM package or using a simple HTML solution. We will use this one. So copy the form break code. I go to my website, insert HTML in head tag, and I paste the script code. Now let's edit what is triggering it. So we can segment our user, but for now we will make it to all users. What trigger our survey to appear? So we can select different things, either a new session, so it's anyone arriving on your website, when 50% of the scroll is made on your page, so you won't display it at the very beginning, but when they reach that threshold, or when the user is going to leave. I don't think it's the best experience, but you can do it. But you can also create custom actions. We'll make a very simple one. Visited home. We don't need a description. And you have different options, either by using a CSS selector, so you can precisely define what is triggering that action or by a page URL visit. So we will be using that one. If our URL contain index.html, we can test it by copy pasting our URL. Let me try with my URL, test match, and it match so I know it will appear and trigger that action when we arrive on that page. Or you can also define based on inner text of a button. Okay, let's track that action. So we created our action, we need to select it in the when. Then we can make that when that action is performed, we wait a few seconds before displaying it. Let's put it to two. And we can also add different conditions, but we will keep our visited home. And then you can also edit the response options. What it does is that you can stop when the survey will be happening. So if it reaches a number of response, then you don't want it anymore. You can make it available until a specified date. And you can also redirect your user on completion. But we won't do any. We just want that to have the survey on the bottom right of our website. And you can also edit recontact option. What it will define is when your user will see that. So either once, if you display it once, it won't appear again, or until they submit a response because you really want them to fill the form, or every time as long as it match the condition that we define in our action here. Let's make it until we submit a response and let's publish it. Now we arrive here. Let's try to see if it appears on our website. I load my web page. It doesn't appear immediately because we set it to wait two seconds and then it appear here. Let's say I want to enable CD on one of my project. I hit next. I have the message telling me they can help me schedule a session. 
and it opens correctly my Calendly. Now, if we go back to our dashboard for this specific survey, we have a summary of how many times it has been displayed, the number of response, a percentage, and a percentage of completion. We have the detail about what happened. I selected Enable CI-CD on my project. Then that question wasn't asked, but do you need help? I clicked on it, so the click-through rate is at 100%. This is the global overview, but you can go into responses and have detail for each user. You can filter all those responses by adding some filter based on any data. Then you can select the time range and you can download all the responses. Here, our user is anonymized because we didn't add any information about it, but we can go into people and we see that we can add additional information such as user ID or email. By following the documentation, we can see the instructions to identify our user, either by the user ID or user email, or we can also add custom attributes that we need. Let's take the set email one. I will edit the code here in the head tag. I will do it in an ugly way, set timeout. We will wait for two seconds and we will call the formbreaks.setemail. Name it toto at example.com. Now I can reload my page to be sure that it identify me. And now on our people page, we see user is toto at example.com. We didn't define a user ID, but we have the email. Then we have actions and attributes. We already saw the action when we defined what trigger our survey to appear, but you can define them globally here. If you have multiple surveys, it's more useful. You can also have an overview of the attributes that you defined in your code. It will be listed here. Then you can add integrations to your Formbrick service. JavaScript widget is what we used. We can integrate it with Zapier, a custom webhook, or N810. By the way, we have a video of N810 on our channel if you want to discover it. And finally, we have the settings of our instance. That's where you will be able to configure your Formbrick experience, but also the appearance and settings of each widget. And you can also invite other team members on your Formbricks. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, please hit the like button as it really helps our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss our upcoming videos, but in the meantime you can watch our existing one available here.